Hi all, I want to continue talking about power series. Last time we did one example. Now I want to describe the procedure that we were using and, uh, and give you more examples. And let me just remind you of the key fact, which is key facts, which are that if you have a power series, it's always going to converge on an interval that is centered at A, that is centered at this point in the, um, the, the, at which the series itself is centered, x minus a to the k. So centered at a means it's going to be all the points from a minus some number to a plus some number. Um, that's the interval, r is the radius, just like in a disk, it's the radius. So all the points from a minus r to a plus r, and um, possibly including the endpoints. So the way that works out in practice is this. Somebody gives you a power series, and you are trying to figure out where, it's, um, where it converges. You start with a ratio test. Your series, remember, it's going to look like this. There's going to have some stuff that involves k times x minus a to the k. That x minus a to the k, if you ignore the fact that x, and in this level of generality, a are unknowns, is some number to the index. So it's an exponential term. We know how to handle those. Um, but remember, it can be positive or negative, depending on whether x is bigger or smaller than a. So when you deal with the absolute value in, that, in the ratio test limit, that absolute value has to remember whether x minus a is positive or negative. So that becomes the absolute value of x minus a raised to the k. Uh, you're going to take that limit and hold on to all the way throughout that expression, absolute value of x minus a, you're going to always end up with the absolute value of x minus a times or divided by some number. So we can say if it's times, you can take the reciprocal. That number is going to end up being the radius of convergence. So because remember, the ratio test says that that limit Uh, which will always end up being absolute value of x minus a divided by some r, converges absolutely when that limit is less than 1. Okay? And, I, and as I say here, sometimes r will be 0 or infinity. We'll see what that looks like in examples, but most often it's a number. So that means, so once you've completed the rest ratio test, you know it's the series is going to converge for absolutely for any x that satisfies this inequality. We can simplify that inequality by multiplying both sides by r to get the distance between x and a is less than r. That means we're talking about all the points x within a distance less than r of a. So that's the interval centered at a of length 2r, of radius r. And one way to see that is to say if the absolute value of a number is less than r, then that number has to be between plus r and minus r. And now you can add a to all three sides of the inequality. Okay, When you add the same number to all three sides of an inequality, you should give off a uh, evil superhero laugh because of the sheer powerful joy of it. And you're left with a minus r is less than x is less than a plus r. So the interval from a minus r to a plus r the series is going to converge absolutely inside that interval. It's going to diverge when this up here, uh, the, when the x minus a over r is greater than 1. So that is, it's going to diverge outside the interval. We only don't know about the endpoints. The two endpoints of the interval, when x is a minus r and a plus r, are points where the ratio test gives you one, so unknown. So typically, you deal with those points separately. 
often you will use the limit comparison test because the ratio test we already know won't work there. And each of those, you will see in examples that one of the endpoints is always alternating and one is always positive. Um, and uh, you will see that each of these endpoints can be absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. So you can end up with an interval that looks like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. Okay, so let's take an example. Our first example is the sum n equals zero to infinity x to the n over n factorial. Since x is equal to x minus zero, we can think of this as a power series centered at zero. Most of our power series will be centered at zero, but we'll have to consider a larger number. So you plug this expression right here into the limit of the ratio test. So on the denominator, you put x to the n over n factorial. In the numerator, all those n's become parentheses n plus 1. You flip the denominator over, so now n factorial is on the top, x to the n is on the bottom, x to the n plus 1 is on the top, n plus 1 factorial is on the bottom, and you let friends play with each other, put n factorial with n plus 1 factorial, abs x to the n plus 1 over abs x to the n, and the same game we always play, n factorial over n plus 1 factorial just becomes 1 over n plus 1. Any number to the n plus 1 over the same number to the n becomes just that number. So we are left with absolute value of x divided by n plus 1. As n goes to infinity, no matter what x is, that approaches 0. Okay? Since 0 is less than 1, that means that this series converges for all x. So the interval of convergence is minus infinity to infinity, and that means we think of the radius of a convergence as infinity. Okay? Um, so the series is absolutely convergent everywhere. Um, so in that case, we didn't have any endpoints. We didn't have to think about the endpoints. Here's another case where we don't have to think separately about the endpoints. Here, the series has an n factorial in it, but now it's in the numerator. So you can see it's going to be hard for this series to converge. And just to make our lives a little more interesting, this time the series is centered at negative 3, right? x plus 3 is equal to x minus negative 3 which means our interval is going to be centered at negative 3. We do the ratio test as always. Limit as n goes to infinity. On the bottom, we have x plus 3 to the n times n factorial. On the top, we have x plus 3 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial. No denominators, so actually we can go straight to putting the individual bits together n plus 1 factorial over n factorial becomes n plus 1. Absolute x plus 3 to the n plus 1 over absolute x plus 3 to the n becomes absolute x plus 3. And now here's something a little bit funny happens. So this is just n goes to infinity absolute x plus 3 times n plus 1. Whatever x is except negative 3, this is some non-zero number times n plus 1, as n goes to infinity, this goes to plus or minus infinity. Plus or minus infinity is not less than 1 in absolute value. So I guess it always goes to plus infinity, because this is always positive. So for every x except negative 3, this series diverges. But at negative 3, this limit is 0 times n plus 1, which is just zero. So as n goes to infinity, it goes to zero, okay? Zero times n plus one zeroes out before n plus one has a chance to go to infinity. So that means that this has funny behavior. When x is exactly negative three, the series is absolutely convergent. Any other x, the series is divergent. So we think of that as the interval is the single point negative 3 
it's a closed interval because it includes its one endpoint, if you want to think of it that way, its radius is zero. All right, finally, an example that behaves more conventionally. We have sum from k equals zero to infinity of k over seven to the k times x minus one to the k. We do the ratio test. By now, it should be getting kind of boring. k, x minus one to the k, seven to the k. On top, you have k plus one, x minus one to the k plus one, seven to the k plus one. Flip over the terms, put them together. You've got a k plus one on the top over a k on the bottom. You've got this seven to the k ends up on top, and this seven to the k ends up on bottom. And then you've got absolute x minus one to the k plus one over absolute x minus one to the k because of the absolute value signs. The first factor goes to one as k goes to infinity. The second factor is seven to the k over seven to the k plus one is one over seven. And the third factor is absolute x minus one over one. So the whole thing becomes the, as always, absolute x minus one over seven is less than one. So the radius of convergence is seven. The interval, you can just go straight to all points a distance less than seven from one, and you can write that out on a number line, or you can do it algebraically by saying, that should be absolute values, that's a typo, sorry. Um, by taking this expression, multiplying both sides by seven, that tells you absolute x minus one is less than seven. The absolute value of a number being less than seven means the number is somewhere between seven and minus seven, and add one, to all three sides, hysterical, maniacal laughter, and you get negative six is less than x is less than eight. So the interval of convergence is from minus six to eight, that is centered at one and of radius seven. That means its total length is 14. Now we have to deal with endpoints. How do you deal with endpoints? You take my a plus seven, which is eight, and a minus seven, which is negative six, you plug each of those in facts. Let's watch how that plays out. Here's the original series, k over seven to the k, x minus one to the k. Plug in eight for x, and you've got eight minus one is seven to the k, which magically cancels out with the seven to the k on the bottom. We're left with the series k equals zero to infinity of k, how do you approach that? Start with a divergence test. As k goes to infinity, k goes to infinity. So the divergence test tells you that this series diverges, so we are missing that endpoint. How about negative six? Something very similar happens. Now instead of eight, you have eight minus one, you have minus six minus one. We get negative seven to the k over seven to the k. Those don't quite cancel out. Negative seven to the k is minus one to the k times seven to the k. The seven to the k's cancel out, but we're left with, sorry for the typo, minus one to the k times k. Still, divergence test tells you that this is going to infinity, does not converge to zero, so this ser series diverges at this point. So the actual interval is minus six comma eight open endpoints because neither negative six nor eight is in the interval.